Colorado lawmakers closed major deals this week, passing the much-debated transportation and parabells. Senate Bill 1 will provide $495 million for road improvements, bridges, and alternative transportation projects in its first year. Meanwhile, a last-minute compromise was reached on Senate Bill 200 regarding the state's public pension system. David, it was a fast and furious end of the session, and usually with an election year, there's a little bit more battling and maybe you know a, a lot of headlines, but not a whole lot getting done. This last week was a little bit different. We saw two major bills get to the finish line. Your thoughts? Well, as in uh, marriages that have their ups and downs, it's easier for people to get along in the end when there's a lot of money uh, for them to uh, spend. Uh, and that was certainly true in, in, in this session. There's a they ended up having a lot more money than they expected, certainly back in December. Uh, the improving economy uh, and the uh, 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 tax reform uh, that passed nationally has a secondary consequence because it changes. Um, most people will get, a, the vast majority of people are getting a significant federal tax cut, but by changing what is federal taxable income and expanding that, Colorado's taxes tax system starts with what is your federal taxable income and so that that actually is going up and so there's a big windfall the way they spent it uh, was of course not in compliance with the Constitution which says when you have a surplus you ask the voters uh, for how to, can we keep it or would you like the money back as, as a tax refund and they of course they had a, a bipartisan uh, consensus not to do that uh, their reform of, of PARA, the employee uh, retirement account for uh, state employees and also for uh, teachers, was a good baby step. PARA is on its way to bankruptcy. It is not going to be able to pay the very generous uh, pensions that it has promised. They made a little bit of progress, uh, including raising employee contributions, huge increase in state contribution. That That's going to help some, but it, it's it's only a first step uh, and Paris still is in serious trouble. They allowed new employees to have direct contribution plans like an IRA or a KEO, which is great, then, then it's their money right from the start, except thanks to the teachers union, teachers get excluded from that. Another case where teachers unions don't represent the interests of individual working teachers. Eric, you've been our go-to on para issues uh, for a while now. Uh, what did you think of the grand compromise we saw this week? I think it was, uh, I'll be slightly more positive than David. First of all, I need to disclose I've been involved in this issue professionally um, for an, a number of years. I have a definite viewpoint on this issue, which is that the system is badly, badly troubled and has needed reform for some period of time. Uh, kudos to the people who carried this bill. This was a heavy lift and a really thankless lift. There's really no constituency out there that stands on chairs and tables and applauds you for fixing para. And whether it was Jack Tate in the Senate, uh, who obviously has been the subject of other conversations, but he did very well by this bill. Casey Becker, the majority leader in the House, and she was the one really on the hot seat, given the susceptibility of Democrats to pressure from the teachers union and others. Uh, Casey Becker stood tall on this issue and has a political future. Uh, if we're giving out plaudits, we also ought to give out a few barbs. Crisanta Duran, the speaker, who's now exiting as speaker, uh, did not distinguish herself in any way on this bill uh, and on a number of other bills, uh, wholly owned uh, property of, of, of union interests and other establishment interests. I know um, Crisanta Duran hopes to have a political future, whether it's as mayor of Denver or potentially even a challenger to Cory Gardner or whatever. And uh, she better broaden the constituency beyond the very narrow constituency she's been representing. Uh, there is no way when you're in a $32 billion hole, which is probably closer to $50 billion, but we'll go with the $32 billion number. That's more than the entire state budget for a year. And that's Pear's own number as the hole they've been in. There's no way to fix the hole without more money. You know, you'd like to have other things that don't cost money. There's no way to fix it without money. So money was going to be required. David's point about the defined contribution plan is absolutely right. If it's good enough for a court bailiff, why shouldn't it be good enough for a, as an option? It's not a requirement. It's only an option for a new teacher. And then the last flaw that remains and was unaddressed in this bill is they are still basing all these numbers on an anticipated rate of return of 7.25%, which is probably wildly optimistic in the post-downturn times. And if they don't meet that number, then all the other metrics go out the window. 
Penn, you've been part of these uh, flurry of bills at the end of a session as a former state lawmaker. Uh, did this feel any different, and what did you think about these two bills we've been discussing? Um, it didn't feel any different. The only thing that surprised me was that the General Assembly did not push one of them a week or two earlier and get it off the table so that they could focus more on the other one. I think, quite frankly, they needed to spend more time with the transportation bill than they actually did. Uh, just a couple things I want to talk about with regard to PARA. And, and uh, sort of as disclosure, as a former legislator, I'm a PARA member. And as an attorney, I have represented PARA's interests before. What Coloradans need to understand is the fundamental issue with PARA results uh, or is the result of two things. Number one, governors and legislators, whether Republican or Democrat, for decades have intentionally underfunded para. There's this whole concept of making the actuarially required contribution to the fund on an annual basis. Historically, Colorado has never done that. We always put the money in other places. So the fact that there's a gap was known to everyone who's sitting there now and the people who preceded them. So that's no surprise. Number two, the other thing that happened is with the downturn, um, uh, the economic downturn in 08 and 09, with some of the federal legislation, we changed how we measure solvency in funds. And so para, like other public pension funds, are graded more rigorously than they were before. And so based on those metrics, the grades have dropped just because the curve has moved even though the amount of money in the fund relative to what's owed hasn't necessarily changed. So keep those two things in mind. That being said, where the legislature end up was a start at beginning to, to fix PARA. I would offer as an aside, three years ago, there was a bill that would have gone far further, but Walker Stapleton showed up on the Mike Rosen show and then cratered his own bill that he'd been working on for two years that could have fixed the problem. So that's PARA. In terms of transportation funding, I think many people are surprised that uh, Democrats in the legislature did not push for new revenues in Senate Bill 1, instead deferring to the measures that the chamber is putting forward, which are now going to be competing with a measure that John Caldera will have, but that only relies on existing revenues, not new revenues. So it, it was an interesting session. Patty, the finale of these two big bills, what do you think? Well, first of all, you see the problem that Denver Post has our old print media because so much action happened in the last hour that if you read the Denver Post on Thursday morning in print, it was all out of date. But they also did good reporting online. But you didn't just have those bills. You had the Colorado Civil Rights Division waiting to the very, very last second. And finally, it had been the object of a lot of conservative scorn. Pulled out. That's continuing. It's an important agency. You had beer at the very last second, a little reprieve for mom and pops. Um, Para, we had written a lot. David Sirota had done a piece in conjunction with us. It's not just the $32 billion shortfall, but it's the amount of money that's gone in fees to Wall Street, Wall Street firms, and that's not disclosed. So at the last second, there was a slight opening of transparency, which is good. We need much more transparency in mo at the legislature and in government in general. Um, the transportation bill that it actually made it through as it did was kind of a surprise and not even at 1159 which is pretty much when we got para.